We will now begin talking about the dot product, perhaps the most brilliant idea in all of linear algebra. And of course, the dot product is the inspiration for the inner product, the last remaining pillar of linear algebra we haven't yet discussed. We will find that the dot product is so useful in geometry that of course we want to have something like the dot product in other vector spaces. And that's precisely what the inner product is. The inner product is a generalization of the dot product for arbitrary vector spaces. Now I would like to make a few notes on the terminology so we can get those out of the way and concentrate on the operator itself. Sometimes the dot product is called the scalar product and that is actually a very appropriate name for it because the dot product takes two vectors and produces a number or a scalar. I actually prefer the term scalar product because it accurately describes what the operator does. But of course the term dot product is more common and we'll stick with it. And the word dot refers to the symbol that we use to denote this operator by. Okay, now you have also already heard the term dot product in this term. When we were talking about matrix multiplication from the quote unquote dot product perspective, that is when we evaluate the resulting matrix one entry at a time by quote unquote dotting a row from one matrix by the column from the other. That meaning of the term dot product is of course very much related to the dot products that we're about to discuss, but only when we bring component spaces back in, in a couple of videos. And that's when these diagrams will become relevant again. But for now, we'll talk about the dot product in a pure geometric setting. Okay, now let's talk about the definition of the dot product. The dot product of two vectors is defined to be a number that is a product of three numbers, the length of one vector, the length of the other, and the cosine of the angle between them. That's the definition. And my first remark is that I think this definition on the surface makes no sense at all. And I say that because this quantity does not correspond to any geometric quantity whatsoever. I would have been, it would have been much easier for me to accept if this was sine of gamma because length of V times length of W times sine of the angle between them is related to the area of this triangle. It's exactly twice the area of the triangle. Maybe I would have been more accepting of length of V plus length of W. May not be a useful operation, but at least it makes geometric sense. Also, parts of this expression make geometric sense. For example, if I just multiply the length of V by cosine gamma, I will get the length of the projection of the vector V onto the vector W. And you can see that from this triangle, if you drop this line, here's a right angle. Then from this triangle, where the length of this side is the length of V, you can see that the length of this side is, of course, the length of V times cosine gamma. So this part has a geometric interpretation. But when you multiply the length of this vector by the length of W, well, there is no clear geometric interpretation. And that's precisely what makes this definition so ingenious, that despite its apparent lack of geometric interpretation, it actually has enormous geometric utility. It has a near monopoly on geometric computations. Because it turns out that just about any meaningful geometric quantity can be expressed in terms of the inner product. In this video, we will only see three examples of that, but there are hundreds of examples of that, and we will see many more very important examples of that when we discuss inner products. For now, we'll be happy with just three. And that property, being able to express meaningful geometric quantities, it makes, uh, the, inner pro it makes the dot product a bridge, an essential bridge between geometry and algebra. Okay, well, let's talk about what those properties are. And the first one will surprise you a little bit, and I'll have to explain to you why this relationship is significant. The first one, of course, is the length of a vector. Because let's consider what would happen 
if we were to dot a vector, and that's how you sometimes use the dot product, you use it as a verb to dot. So when we dot, and that makes it actually a better term because you can say to scalar two vectors. So that's the advantage of this term. So what would happen if we were to dot a vector with itself? Let's, for example, dot the vector v with itself. And as we're going through these examples, the brilliance of this definition will slowly begin to dawn on you. And just as an aside, I actually don't know who invented the dot product. Uh, some sources point to Gibbs, the great American physicist, presenting this definition in his book on vector calculus, which of course would have happened in 1900-something. And something tells me that uh, this is a much older definition. It's got to be a couple hundred years older. But it's not out of the realm of possibility that it was actually Gibbs who came up with this product, this definition, though unlikely. Okay, back to the task at hand. The length of a vector v. When we dot a vector by itself, we will have the length of v times the length of v, once again, because we're dotting v with itself, times the cosine of the angle between the vector v and the, itself, and the vector v. And that angle is, of course, 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. And when we dot a vector with itself, we conclude that the result is the length of the vector squared. So let's write it here. This will be our first quantity, length of a vector, expressed in terms of the dot product. So length squared of a vector equals v dot v. And you might say, I see that. It was actually pretty simple, but it's got to be useless because the dot product is defined in terms of lengths. So what's the point of then re-expressing the length in terms of the dot product? If in order to evaluate this dot product, we would have to evaluate the lengths first, right? And then even the angle between the two vectors and its cosine. So uh, there is no point. It expresses length in terms of something which needs length in the first place in order to calculate it. And I completely agree with you. That's confusing at first. But as this list grows, and as you see meaningful objects on the left-hand side, and essentially nothing but, the dot, nothing but dot products on the right-hand side, you will see, well, gee, it seems like the dot product is the only operation that I need. If you were thinking as a computer scientist and approaching some uh, expansive geometric project and you were thinking, what routines should I set up to be able to do all the work that I need to do? Well, it turns out you may only need one additional routine that you don't already have in your computer language and that would be the dot product. Once you code up the dot product, whatever it does, you will be able to write everything else in terms of that routine. That's what you're beginning to realize. So if you were uh, in a great saga, facing some great geometric challenge, and you were allowed to bring only one tool with you, that would have to be the dot product evaluator, in addition to your common arithmetic and maybe ability to calculate uh, linear combinations. But if you have that one tool, the inner product calculator, the inner product, excuse me, I keep saying the inner product, that's out of linear algebra habit. I mean the dot product. If I've misspoken until now, I apologize. Whenever I say inner product, I actually mean the dot product. I'm just conditioned to think like a linear algebraist. So in any case, if you just bring the dot product evaluator with you, you're set. That's what we're sort of beginning to see here. And then when we soon bring in component spaces and find a great component space representation of the inner product, of the dot product, you will see that now I actually have a great algebraic tool for evaluating inner product, dot products, and then I can evaluate whatever I want once I have that. Okay, let's, let's now move on to evaluating the angle between two vectors, which was something that we wanted to do. Ultimately, we want to have an expression for the angle between two vectors in terms of their components with respect to some basis. 
but we'll get there, but we'll get there through the inner product. And of course, you see right from this expression, cosine gamma. So we, we don't, won't deal with uh, arc cosine, so instead of getting the angle, we'll just get cosine of the angle, just as good. Cosine gamma equals v dot w, are you with me? Divided by the length of v, divided by the length of w. And of course, these lengths already have an expression in terms of inner products. So we're about to write this down. This will be larger than we would like, but it will have nothing but inner products on the right-hand side, and of course, a little bit of arithmetic. So we have v dotted with w divided by the length of v, which of course is the square root of v dotted with v, multiplied by the square root of w dotted with w. And there you go, yet another essential geometric quantity expressed in terms of nothing but in a dot product and uh, elementary arithmetic al or maybe algebra operations such as the square root. Let me make the dots more prominent. All right, so that's two essential geometric quantities. Let's go for the third one. Let's actually go for something that we discussed already, which is this vector projection, what should we call it? Let's call it u of v onto w. So that's interesting, that's an interesting one. Maybe you want to pause the video and come up with an expression that uses nothing but dot products, uh, whatever algebraic operations you want, such as multiplication, division, extraction of roots, and possibly also once you have the number, you can multiply a vector by it. So pause the video and let's see if you can come up with that expression. But here's how I think about it. So we need to have a vector that points along w and has this length, the length that we've already discussed, which is the length of v times cosine gamma. So here's not the ultimate answer, but a temporary answer, an intermediate answer. So here's what the length of this vector should be. It should be the length of v times cosine gamma. So we just got what we have here is the length of the desired vector, but it's just a number. We need to turn it into a vector. So let's multiply it by, well, we can't quite multiply it by w, although it's a step in the right direction, no pun intended, because that will give us a vector that points in the right direction, but it will have the, long, the wrong length. We have to multiply it not by w, but by a unit vector in the direction of w. And that vector can be expressed as w divided by the length of w. If you take a vector and you divide it by its length, you will have a unit vector in the direction that you want. Okay, so what we have here is a little bit of a mess. What we want is a much cleaner answer. And not only a cleaner answer, we don't want any quantities like this. Well, this is fine, but these are all not very good because what we want is an expression strictly in terms of inner products. And we're actually almost there. Here is what we're going to do. We'll multiply, let me put parentheses here. We'll divide and multiply the whole expression by length of w. Well, multiply and divide. So we'll multiply it by length of w, which is okay because we're multiplying the whole thing by the number one. It's just a trick, so now we have enough ingredients that we can combine together into dot products. And do you see what's happening here? If we combine these three terms right here, we have v dot w, length of v, length of w times the cosine of the angle between them. And what we have in the denominator is length of w times length of w. We can express that in terms of dot products as well. That's just w dotted with w itself. So what we have is, look how nice this expression will be. v dotted with w divided by w dotted with w times 
W, a lot of W's. But here we go, a new perfectly meaningful geometric quantity, not just meaningful, very interesting geometric quantity, this vector right here, expressed in terms of nothing but in a product. And it's a very simple and compact expression. So we're, here we go, here we have three, but there are actually, like I said before, hundreds of these examples. And with each additional example, your appreciation for the dot product and later on the inner product will grow. So, now that we are understanding how dot products are used, wouldn't it be great to find a representation for the dot product in the component space? And the answer is, of course it is, and we'll get to that task after we discuss a few properties of the dot product in the next video.